Yes, hello once again, welcome back to Classic Dirt Bike uh, TV and uh, just in case you haven't noticed, uh, my channel is now completely uh, ad free on YouTube so uh, I've decided to demonetize uh, my video channel and remove uh, all the advertising because uh, the, the meagre earnings that was coming in from uh, those ads uh, was basically uh, all going to the tax man anyhow so I've decided to uh, remove all the advertising and let you uh, view my videos entirely uh, for free. So right now if uh, you're into your uh, four-stroke uh, dirt bikes and you may appreciate uh, this next clip because uh, this is a bike that I came across at the 2024 Telford uh, Classic Dirt Bike Show. So let's dive straight into it and take a look at Lee Perry's lovely uh, 595 Husqvarna Twin Shock Special. Right, so this uh, featured Swedish four-stroke Husky is the latest creation from Lee Perry, who of course is the owner and proprietor of the Husqvarna Man uh, dirt bike uh, franchise and this is a, a big bore 595 cc thumper that Lee's uh, recently put together and uh, it's a bike that he's uh, called Crazy Sue in memory uh, of the passing of his lifelong partner uh, Suzanne David who uh, Lee uh, unfortunately lost uh, back in 2022 uh, and who in fact uh, along with Lee attended uh, this Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show for the best part of uh, 10 years. And so this particular 595 bike that Lee's built is uh, one of the very first models that he's converted to an electric start. Uh, but uh, apart from that uh, electric start modification, he's also uh, made some nice uh, trick bits and pieces to fit onto this bike. But uh, essentially, uh, this is a prototype uh, test machine to uh, evaluate the electric start system uh, which Lee uh, hopes uh, to develop uh, as a bolt-on accessory that you can fit uh, onto your old uh, 510 uh, four-stroke Huskies. But as you can guess, the engineering on these Lee Perry racers is uh, without doubt uh, top quality and I've already come across other examples of Lee's handiwork uh, at this Telford show and this bike here is uh, yet another example of his skills and craftsmanship uh, from uh, back in 2019. But when it comes to uh, rebuilding, uh, restoring, or even uh, re-engineering these Swedish twin shock uh, bikes, Lee knows exactly uh, how these bikes are built uh, inside and out, and he's uh, yet uh, another good contact if you're maybe needing some new old stock or even uh, bespoke parts made uh, for your aging uh, Husk Vanna. But his website is certainly worth a visit at uh, huskvannaman.com. And actually, when it comes to these big uh, four stroke Husk Vannas, Lee uh, can even build you a brand new uh, complete bike or even uh, supply you uh, with a rolling chassis uh, so that you can then just uh, pop your own uh, four stroke Husk Vanna engine into the frame. But most of the parts that uh, Lee uses is usually uh, new old stock or even handmade uh, by Lee himself. But uh, as I said, uh, you don't have to just take my word for it. Uh, take a look at his website and uh, have a look for yourself. But anyhow, back to our featured bike here. So the light gauge tubular steel uh, chassis uh, was again uh, built by the Husqvarna man and this uh, frame and the bike swing arm have also been uh, chrome plated probably uh, just to give the bike that little bit of bling seeing as how it's uh, a prototype uh, machine but uh, unfortunately the way I see it there's no uh, real reason or advantage in chrome plating uh, a motocross bike chassis when it's going to be used in possibly the worst environment uh, uh, imaginable where that uh, nice shiny chromes uh, going to get all chipped and battered by all manner of foreign uh, objects. But nevertheless, I can see why it's been done on this lovely showpiece here, which uh, does make the bike uh, look uh, great, but slightly impractical uh, in my uh, opinion. 
But nevertheless, when you see uh, the chrome chassis and uh, the swing arm here uh, in the flesh, so to speak, you can see that it's all been done uh, very professionally. But uh, getting down to the business end of our 595 Crazy Sioux Racer with this big bruiser uh, of a motor, which will uh, probably uh, have much bigger uh, inlet and exhaust valves than the stock uh, 510 Husky that this engine is based on. And no doubt it will probably also have a high lift cam as well, although uh, Lee uh, never actually gave me that uh, information on the day, but I'm assuming that uh, this, this is uh, the case uh, with this engine. But as we mentioned previously, this uh, Husky uh, power plant's been upgraded uh, to an electric uh, start, which will uh, be a very welcome addition if you're uh, one of these 510 owners who uh, kind of find it hard uh, to kick over uh, these big uh, four-strokers. And in this uh, clip here, you can see exactly where the starter motor's uh, been placed, just behind the bottom end of uh, the cylinder there. And uh, Lee's uh, also manufactured a quite nice alloy mounting bracket there to fix it all in place. Now, because the starter motor's uh, mounted on top of the crankcases, uh, naturally, it's right in the path of what would have been uh, the original clutch cable and its uh, operating uh, lever. So uh, Lee's simply uh, now converted the cable operated clutch uh, to a hydraulic system, uh, which also uh, alleviates that particular problem and it makes the clutch uh, on these big huskies much lighter uh, to operate uh, as well. And because uh, this bike has a new electric start, uh, it also requires uh, a battery and uh, Lee's very neatly uh, made up a combined uh, alloy airbox and battery storage compartment here underneath the bike's seat. And uh, this will replace what probably would have been uh, the stock standard uh, plastic item. Now, again, I'm quite confident that it was a big uh, McCuney carburetor that was used to supply the fuel-air mixture into these big uh, 595 engines because uh, uh, these big mothers uh, certainly uh, liked a drink uh, when they were being uh, worked hard uh, on the track. And uh, one other little uh, modification that Lee did on the ignition side of the engine was to uh, machine these holes at the back end of the ignition cover just to keep that magneto uh, slightly uh, cooler although it's probably best not to dive into uh, a deep wet muddy hole uh, with this part of the engine exposed or you may uh, not get the bike uh, to be able <laughs> to drive out uh, the other side but uh, other parts like this uh, quite nice alloy brake lever and uh, those wide heavy duty footrests are again all parts that are supplied through Lee's uh, Husk Varnaman uh, franchise, which, as you can see, are uh, very well made and uh, top quality. But there's some more nice engineering here on the clutch side of our 595, where there's uh, now just a simple cover plate that lets you uh, gain access uh, to the clutch without having to remove uh, the kickstart and, uh, of course, all of those other casing uh, cover screws because it's now just a, a simple case of uh, removing uh, the shifter and uh, these six allen bolts and then you're usually uh, good to go but there's also uh, some uh, bespoke uh, cnc uh, machine etching as well on that clutch cover and uh, that husqvarna emblem and the husky writing does add that uh, something a bit different than you would normally find on an original uh, 1980s uh, 510 uh, engine. But just in case uh, you're wondering, uh, that uh, very small alloy uh, cover there just above uh, the clutch uh, cover is where uh, the starter motor drive gears are housed, which uh, act of course directly onto the top of the geared uh, clutch basket to enable the starter motor uh, to turn uh, the engine. Now, I'm sure you already know that these big four-stroke Husqvarna's were 
uh, a single cylinder engine, but they did have uh, a twin port exhaust uh, cylinder head and uh, the exhaust system uh, on our featured bike was again uh, custom made in stainless steel and uh, these twin header pipes uh, then uh, led on to this uh, alloy uh, megaphone type tailpipe here on the bike's uh, left hand side and again back in the early 1980s uh, the earlier uh, 510s would have probably had an exhaust pipe that ran down either side of the bike with of course uh, the twin tailpipes here uh, at the rear. Now with regards uh, the bike's front end now uh, I was never actually uh, given any information on these front forks uh, on the day I took the uh, clips and pictures but uh, they do certainly look like uh, the same kind of units that were fitted uh, to the original 510s uh, back in the day and I expect that Lee's uh, probably beefed these up uh, with stronger springs and uh, possibly even uh, higher quality internals uh, as well. And as far as I know, the uh, hubs on our Crazy Sue bike are your stock Husqvarna items, but uh, naturally uh, these gold anodized alloy wheels are brand new uh, replacements which have been uh, relaced with uh, heavy duty spokes onto those uh, stock hubs. And again, this rear brake's been upgraded to a twin leading shoe affair, which is another improvement over the original uh, shoe brake on the 1980s uh, stock uh, machine. So when it came to choosing uh, rear shocks uh, on our Lee Perry 595, as you can see, Lee's gone uh, for a pair of uh, YSS uh, piggyback uh, units which again are very high quality uh, suspensions and uh, are hugely uh, popular uh, with the twin shock racing uh, fraternity because these do have plenty of means of adjustment with regards uh, tuning to the rebound and damping uh, and of course uh, the other pluses that they're all made uh, right here in uh, the UK. And uh, once more, because this is a bespoke uh, one-off special, it's uh, also had some nice custom painting done here uh, on the bike's uh, Husky fuel tank. And uh, that custom uh, made seat as well, as you can see, creeps uh, right up the back of that uh, fuel tank to enable the rider uh, to move his body weight as far forward as possible. And uh, even, even right on top of the tank, if it's required, but uh, certainly it's possibly uh, one of the longest racing seats I've ever uh, seen on a motocrosser for quite some time. But uh, nevertheless, it's all uh, very well made and uh, high quality uh, once again. And as we creep uh, further forward uh, up here uh, at the business end of our Husqvarna, we have a pair of modern style uh, rental Handlebars complete uh, with its foam uh, bar pad accessory. Uh, now the bike's uh, throttle gasser is uh, an Italian uh, domino part and uh, this uh, twist grip uh, has the job of controlling uh, all of those many horses uh, waiting to be let loose from that 595 Husqvarna motor. And uh, as you can gather we also have two switches here on the handlebars with uh, this one here uh, on the front brake side uh, being the button uh, for the starter motor and of course the other one uh, on the clutch side is the kill switch uh, for the engine just in case of uh, any emergencies with that husky uh, motor and it needs to be shut down uh, in a hurry. But some of the other parts on this bike, like the uh, side panels and uh, the front and the rear mudguards are all uh, brand new replacements, as you'd expect uh, on a bike uh, such as this. So uh, uh, these are obviously uh, not brand new old stock or even uh, second hand uh, Husky plastics, but nevertheless, uh, they still uh, look the part on this uh, superb uh, four banger uh, Swedish racer. Now you're probably uh, wondering to yourself, what exactly does an old 
uh, twin shock bike like this costs to build once you've had uh, all of the trick parts uh, bolted onto it. And uh, to tell you the truth, uh, I don't actually know myself, although uh, I do I do expect that it wouldn't be cheap with all of those uh, custom parts and uh, that electric uh, starter uh, upgrade. But uh, I dare say if you were maybe to get in touch with Lee through his uh, Husqvarna Man uh, website, then I'm pretty sure that he'd put you uh, in the picture. And who knows, uh, maybe if the price is right, you may even uh, manage to pick up uh, this uh, featured machine, which uh, also has the accolade of being his first ever electric uh, start machine. Although there's certainly uh, no question at all about the, the quality of this bike's uh, construction and the many uh, high-end components that Lee's uh, either bought in or uh, manufactured himself uh, to build this awesome uh, looking bike. And even although uh, Lee couldn't manage a smile here uh, for the camera, it's still uh, quite a good tribute uh, to his late partner Suzanne, who always uh, accompanied Lee to this show each and every year. And uh, that Crazy Sue title that he's given this bike uh, may have just a small insight into how his late uh, partner Suzanne uh, lived her life. But if this is the uh, kind of quality bikes that Lee's uh, going to produce in the future, then uh, I just can't wait to see his next uh, project when uh, I make my next uh, scheduled return uh, to the Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show, which will be, of course, in 2025. So there you have it, another nice uh, custom special four-stroke Husqvarna uh, built uh, by Lee Perry, the Husqvarna man. And uh, as I said, that was a bike that uh, Lee basically uh, produced in uh, memory of his late partner, uh, Suzanne uh, David. But as I said, you can uh, see now that uh, my YouTube channel is completely ad free so uh, you can view all of my uh, video content without interruption uh, from advertisers because uh, uh, the meager uh, money that I was making on placing ads on my videos was uh, basically all going to the tax man anyhow so I've decided to just remove all the advertising protocols and let you view uh, my con content absolutely uh, for free. But I do hope you will continue to uh, come back uh, to my channel and possibly even uh, subscribe because uh, we will be uh, returning very soon uh, to take a look at more of these old school uh, vintage classics when we return to your number one and favourite uh, classic dirt bike TV channel. <laughs>